You are now Caliborn. You needed something to sop up all the blood, so you snatched your sister's fanfic tome for the road. Just by ripping the pages out, you're already giving her dumb stories more attention than they deserve. She's lucky you were in such a pickle for clean towelettes. Ordinarily, you wouldn't use this trash to wipe your ass. But then again, that's only because ordinarily, you're changed to the other side of the room. You capture log the tome, savoring the recently acquired freedom of having a fetch modus all to yourself. The idea of storing an object and then freely being able to retrieve it at any time without having to barter with a truculent sibling over a series of inconvenient naps? It's almost too much liberation to fathom. You truly are a free adult man, and you are so, so proud of yourself. You love having a dead sister. Having a dead sister is an experience you would highly recommend to everybody. You are already so far from home. You have never walked so far in your life. At least, not while awake. The immovable juju block keeping you shackled to your room was just one of the many banes of your existence. It's hard being a cherub and growing up with lots of weird magical rules that nobody understands and have no discernible origin or purpose. Heh. <laughs> It's hard being a cherub and growing up with lots of weird magical rules that nobody understands and have no discernible origin or purpose, and nobody understands. You peer at your former prison through the scope of your machine gun. You aren't really supposed to hold the gun by the magazine like that, but whatever. There's the crux truder. It was the only device available to be deployed. You're pretty sure there were supposed to be more devices that went with it, but you guess your game session is a little different? You were also under the impression that there were supposed to be gates directly above your home, but you don't see any. Maybe if you look higher. Still no gates, but there's Skya, all clouded over. You like it much better that way. And there's Prospect in close orbit. That's where your dead sister's murdered dream torso is. I wonder if the kingdom has gotten around to having a... What do the humans call it again? You forget. Some sort of ludicrous cadaver festival. Just the typical kind of sentimental horseshit cooked up by races of people who actually live in each other's proximity. They often exhibit such bizarre tendencies that result from esoteric things like culture and tradition. Aliens are so strange. You guess Jack Noir could still be up there too. You'll have to catch up with him later for a debriefing. He's been very useful. You may need his service again sometime. Until then, it seems there's nothing to do but keep exploring. There are no signs of anyone or anything interesting on this planet, except, of course, the same hideous statues which littered your homeworld. You can't seem to shake these god-awful things, even by fleeing to another realm. You don't know what they are, but you suspect that once in an ancient civilization they were probably symbols of tyranny and oppression. Now that you think about it, you believe your entire planet may have been sucked into the medium, not just the cruddy statues. The landscape is very similar, minus the bright red glow from the supergiant. Add one more item to the list of things you don't understand. You thought you were going to be sent to a cool new planet, unique to you and your adventure. Some sort of amazing, magical place you could conquer, not the same old barren ball of shit you grew up on. At least, that is what Calliope had you believing. You think she was probably a liar, or just really stupid, or both, times infinity. You keep walking. And walking. Yeah. You're not gonna lie. This place is boring as hell. You were hoping for a lot more out of this adventure, but no. The wasteland is empty. Banality skims the void where a proper fucking adventure should be, as if grazing the stab wound of a murdered sister, or say, a toppled sarswapagus. A stupid note is produced. It's the one assholes play to make their audience start punching themselves in the crotch repeatedly. Today's your first predomination day, and as with all zero preceding it, something feels... Something feels... Er... Uh, what? What are you looking at? 
Look. No, no, wait. Don't look. Just listen. You don't have time for fancy poetry. It's almost as useless as having your thoughts dictated to you, assuming you were even aware of that happening, which you definitely aren't. Cherubs aren't prone to that kind of self-awareness. No way. Absolutely not. Yes. You believe that thought, the one you had just now, by your own volition. And now, it's true reality. See? Yes. You totally agree with that thought you had. Frankly, you don't know about stuff skimming holes or alertness to some purely hypothetical flow of narrative or whatever. You've got major psychological problems. You were meant to be a monster, to destroy something huge and really important, perhaps repeatedly, and to be a total shithead about it. You just haven't found the road that'll take you there yet. Somewhere, in this depressing empty lot of a session, there is a quest waiting for you. You are determined to squeeze more blood from this pathetic stone than all the naturally occurring puppets in Paradox Space keep in their squishy little torsos combined. You stew in your own quasi-lucid hostility as you think this very thought. The one right here, that feels like it's being dictated to you, you think. You think it feels that way, so you guess it's true. But we previously agreed that you were the sole author of your own thoughts, didn't we? That's the thought you should be thinking, and more importantly, believing in as hard as you can, thus slightly reducing its stubborn fakeness attribute. You then think the word, huh? That doesn't sound like a thought you would have, you think to yourself thoughtfully. What the fuck? But seriously, you've got to stop this. If you keep thinking thoughts like this, you'll probably start going crazy, and if you start going crazy, this desolate one-player session will start to feel a lot longer than it's already going to, and, more specifically, than it already did. Still, you can't quite shake the feeling. You have a feeling it's already been a long- Hey! What's that over there? That looks like a great thing to distract you from your awareness-addled reverie. It's some kind of blinking light far off in the distance. It may be part of something else, like a larger structure, but it's so far away the light is all you can see. You have a feeling it's going to be a long walk. Hold on, another distraction happens to distract you from your previous distraction. Really? A distraction to distract you from a distraction? You sure are having some dumb thoughts. Whatever dude, it's your brain. Someone is contacting you, but you don't remember bringing a computer with you. Oh, right. It's your sister's computer, still stored in your shared Silidex. You never understood what a kid chained to her bedroom needed with a portable computer. It made you mad how stupid that was. You take a look at the message. Yes, just as you thought. That plastered floozy is spouting her nonsense again. It looks like your sister told the human her name? That is a clear and egregious violation of the rules. She must have been getting really desperate. The joke is on the human, though. She's trying to wake up a dead girl! It seems their session is still completely blacked out. What a bummer. Where's the fun in harassing these losers when you can't see them? Maybe it's time you left them all behind anyway. You don't have the patience for games with idiots anymore. There are much bigger things on the horizon for you. Psst! Hey, Calliope's bro! I got a secret message for you. It is... <laughs> Calliope! So... Did that work? Calliope, Calliope, Calliope! Is three times the charm? Oh, come on! Wake up, sleepyhead! La... Sign... Maybe you're just AFK? I hope your dumb POS brother doesn't end up reading this instead. Man, I wish you would wake up. Really want to talk to a friend about everything that just happened. I, I mean, another friend who is not part and parcel to my 3BFF's ridiculous nonsense. Guess I'll just give you the scoop on the haps for whenever you wake up. So, yeah, we all finally entered our game. I think I was being the worst kind of turd for opposing the idea for so long. I guess I thought I was being noble, like sacrificing something that was all important and 
We all want it anyways, just so I could fuck with the witch and her plans. But... I don't know what I was thinking, because this shit here is pretty great, I have got to say. Now we are all of the sudden in this crazy place full of pretty green hills and a black empty sky? i never actually seen anything like plants growing or the countryside. It's so peaceful and quiet here. I mean, the racket my loudmouth pals are making notwithstanding. <laughs> We are just chilling at Jake's old broken house on a mountain, figuring out what to do. <laughs> LOL, this all happened so fucking fast. I can't believe we're all together like this suddenly, just hanging out in actual person <laughs> in our moon jammies. <laughs> this is better than I ever thought it would be in the silliest and stupidest way. It feels so surreal and amazing just being here with my friends. I'm still not even sure how this all came together. Mostly a lot of Machiavellian heroic extreme strider bullshit! <laughs> like, I was under attack there. My colony was burning and I remember dying? And I think Jane must have died too? She was on Durst, but I have no idea how she got there. I don't know if Jake died too or what. All, all I know is people were just dying their asses off, left and right. The beeline is we were all in some shit. Dirk, I think, must have killed himself and, like, shipped his own head to Jake on Makeout Mountain, but Dirk also kissed me, it would seem. While I was too dead to notice, unfortunately. Hmm. But then I woke up on Durst, which was getting worked over by the red shit too, and there Jane was, all lying there bloodily and heartbreakingly and probably dead. So I knew I had to kiss her, but God, I feel so pathetic, but I just couldn't do it for some reason. I wanted to, but I guess the blood grossed me out and I'm a total disgrace of a friend. I don't think I'll tell her because it's too embarrassing. <laughs> then Dirk wakes up and kicks my squeamish butt out of the way and kisses her even in spite of his superhuman gayness because he sucks less as a hero. And then we're blasting off suddenly on his fucking rocket, and I don't even know what's happening, but it's all so awesome. And we scoot by somewhere and pick Jane up in her yellow dress, and now she's flying with us, screaming the whole time. <laughs> oh. And and then we get to Jake's place, and shit everywhere is on fire. And he's asleep there, so Dirk splashes him with a bucket of ocean and tells me and Jane to hide? So... We do, and Jake wakes up and starts arguing with Dirk's gross head from the fucking future and climbs up on this stone wall for some reason and just starts making out with the head while the volcano explodes. Jane and I are like, what the absolute fuck? While Dirk's just there with his bucket all like, yup. Then we all eat out of that popsicle stand and now here we are. Wow, that story is a... Goddamn mess. What did I even just say? I don't know. I'll, I'll try to make better sense of all this later. I just wanted to tell you. And thank you for all you did to bring us together like this. It has meant so very much to me. Oh, guess what? I even have a new lightning bug pal. He is Toadie's cute and friendly and blinky as all get out. I think I will name him Dr. Blinkbottom. No, that's shit. How about Twinkly Herbert? Oh, <laughs> Mephail, that is kind of sucky too. But I like it. So I am a keep it. Herbert just blinked in total agreement. OMG, what a friend. Okay, Calliope. By which I mean Calliope. Eh? Eh? Still nothing? Okay, well, uh, I should go then. My, uh, my party's getting a little bit rowdy over there. Oh my god, what are they actually doing? 
<sighs> Not even ten stinking mins into our magic best friend quest and they're already jacking up the drama. Need to flag down the drum ambulance. All these fuckers away. Wow, they are really being so absurd. Maybe it's just because I'm not tipsy ATM, but this shit is like hells of amateur hour to me right now. Maybe if I wasn't as sober as a nun getting slapped by a librarian, I wouldn't even notice. For reals though, may I just say, dying is a hell of a way to sober up quick. Got to remember that trick. So, uh, hey, wake up soon. I will try again later. Must deal with some shit now. Ugh. I think I could use a drink. A friendly clown welcomes you to... It seems he would like to be your guide. Will you let him be your guide? Caliborn? Caliborn, what are you doing? Stop it! Ugh, you finish brutally gunning down the semi-innocent clown for like five solid minutes and turn your attention toward this mysterious tower. What the hell is this thing? Maybe that clown could have helped you understand what you're supposed to do in this empty wasteland, but no. You had better ideas, and all of them were bullets. You just think you can figure out everything by yourself, don't you? Who needs friends and allies, right? Friendship and allegiance are emotions for dipshits like humans and trolls. You really are quite full of yourself, you think. Yes, you just thought that. No, don't resist the thought you just had. You thought it, and you can't unthink it. You also think you are a mean little prick. You had that thought all by yourself, totally unprompted, and it is causing you to reflect on a lifetime spent being petulant and awful. Wait. No, on second thought, you don't think that. You have no remorse, and you think you're great! No, you don't think you're great. You think you suck, and you regret slaughtering that juggalo. Please do not argue with your own brain. That's what a lunatic does. You are really upset that you killed that sweet, helpful bard. No. Don't pretend you aren't. He only wanted to be your guide. Would that have been so bad, you wonder? You wonder this to yourself while a tear rolls down your stupid red cheek. You turn away so no one can see you cry, but you let out a muffled sob and everyone can tell how sad you are. Hey! Voice in my head! Yes? Shut up! No way! Then who would describe what you're thinking and feeling? Nobody! I can think my own thoughts just fine! They're less stupid and condescending than the thoughts you tell my brain to have! But your thoughts are shitty! You should be grateful to have someone spice them up for you. No! What's shitty is you! And what's also shitty is this shitty piece of shit machine you live inside! I don't live inside this thing, you idiot. This is just sort of like a radio tower. It receives and transmits signals. That's kind of obvious. It's not obvious! It's dumb and confusing! I demand to know what's going on! Tell me! Gamzy could have told you a lot of stuff. Who? I can't believe you shot him like that. What's the matter with you? He was literally the first living being you ever met in your whole life, and you gun him down without a single word? You've got some problems. Oh, the clown! He was dreadful and purple and needed to be exterminated quickly. He was a huge fan of yours and was really looking forward to meeting you. 
He wanted to help you with your quest. This is my planet. No one else can live here. I don't need help. <laughs> Yet you want me to tell you what's going on? Yes. Tell me immediately. Nah. Ah! What? I'm getting frustrated. Both by you and this fucking keyboard. What's the matter with it? It's making it impossible to type with my quirk. No, it's not. Yes! The caps lock key appears to be permanently depressed. How do I make it not like that? It's locked. You need a key to unlock it. You need keys to unlock a whole bunch of features of this tower. Where is the key? How should I know? Because you are an infuriating font of knowledge about many things, including my own brain behaviors. Why should I tell you everything? Find your own fucking keys. It's your quest, remember? No, but typing like this is bad. It's really throwing me off. I don't understand the problem. I can't make my use little. No, I got that. But caps lock should make it easier. You do realize when caps lock is on, you can hold down shift to make letters lowercase, right? What? No, I don't use caps lock. I thought it was supposed to be like a training key for retards. Training key? Maybe also for girls. For when they get hysterical and make their letters shout. Okay, got it. Really great theories there. So how do you usually type then? Just never mind. Hang on. Are you saying you hold down shift with one hand while hunting and pecking for all the letters with the other? And when you type a U, you just let go of shift? I said never mind! Wow. Okay, look. I can acknowledge that the method you proposed is a lot more efficient and sensible. I just have my own style that I'm comfortable with. And also, I just never thought of that. How old were you again? Fuck you! Okay, the thing is, don't tell anybody I said this, but I've always had a lot of trouble at learning stuff. Yeah, I know. Fuck it! I'll just type in all big letters, even the U's, who cares? Aw, oh, looks like someone just took his big first step toward growing up. Actually, typing this way is a lot easier. Looks like I win this round, asshole! Win what? I was the one advocating the use of caps lock in the first place, doofus. Don't antagonize me! You aren't a funny person. I can tell you think you're funny. I may have problems learning, but I know when a piece of garbage is trying to be funny. Unsuccessfully. You're right. I do think I'm funny sometimes. Maybe I'm wrong, though. <laughs> you are! Just the wrong and unfunny guy. We all have our flaws to overcome. I do my best, just like you. Think of all you've done in spite of your learning problems. You don't let your disability hold you back, do you? I guess. You won that game of chess with that stupid gambit. Switching the hats, remember? It was a lame ploy, and totally not in the spirit of the rules, but it got under his skin enough to force a loss anyway. You also hired Jack to murder your sister, which was a dick move but reasonably clever. Yes! Those things I did were great! Well, they weren't great so much as terrible, but the point is you can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it. Just because you're struggling with learning doesn't mean you can't realize your destiny. You just have to work a little harder at it. And if you're dealt a lousy hand, and you definitely were with this shitty solo session, then you have to work even harder. That's what I'm going to do! I know you will. You are going to prove all the haters wrong and exceed your own limitations by miles and accomplish more than you ever dreamed possible. Yours is quite an inspiring story, actually. It's just a shame that all your accomplishments will be so horrible. But that's really beside the point. Yeah, I already knew I was incredible and special. What are you trying to do? Inspire me? Save your breath, fuckhead. No, I don't give a shit about making you feel better about yourself. I'm not your guardian or your sprite or your exile or your fucking life coach. I'm just saying some things that are true through the narrative prompt. Take the facts or leave them. Most of your facts are boring so far. I would like better and more useful facts right now. You may be destined for bigger things, but you're still an atrocious, stupid child. 
and you may have won the game with your sister, but that doesn't mean it was the best thing for your development as a person. You had her dream self killed, which is not an opportunity your species typically gets, so she died prematurely instead of allowing the conflict within you to settle itself naturally. In short, you forced your predomination to happen a little too early, and now you're stuck. Stuck? Yes, your personality is stuck in some sort of cantankerous prepubescent limbo. You are going to be a stunted, miserable tool forever. Well, how long was I even supposed to wait for that twee bitch to get out of my skull? It's kind of sad. You really don't know anything about your own species, do you? And I guess you do. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything. Tell me then. No. God damn it. This dialogue is giving me a headache between your passive-aggressive obstinacy and your bizarre motivational diatribes and the fact that I'm having a hard time telling our text apart? What? You are? <sighs> kind of. Well, here's a hint. You're the one typing in capital letters. You're also the one typing in surly, brief, stilted-sounding phrases. No, but the colors are too similar. I know that some letters are big and some are small, how dumb do you think I am? I just have an easier time thinking in colors. What does that even mean, thinking in colors? I told you! My brain works differently, so shut up! Well, if you want to change your text color, you can if you turn on some of these monitors. This thing is like a needlessly complicated desktop computer, really, made of a radio tower tree of old CRT monitors rooted in a big transformer. It needs power, though. How do I power it? See that loose plug there? Oh, fuck. Plug it into something. What a load of shit. That cord is so short. What can it even reach? I don't know. Not my problem. Mm, maybe if I pull it really hard, I can stretch it far enough to plug it into that fucking rock over there? This is beyond asinine. This is your quest. In quests, there are challenges. Challenges which must be overcome by your tiny, learningly disabled brain. I hate you! What you really need is a guide. A mentor of sorts. Too bad you shot that clown. Stop doubting the wisdom of that imbecile with the disturbing underpants! The only thing he has taught me is how to receive hundreds of bullets through the torso in the least dignified manner possible. And also, a crash course in dying a painful death, hopefully. Sorry to disappoint you. He's not dead. What? What did you expect? He's clearly a god tier. Bullshit! Haven't you ever seen a god tier before? You do know what that is, right? Yes! I know what that is! Then you know he's immortal, and can only die under very specific circumstances. Guess there's no point in trying to kill him. But his wings fell off. I saw them fall off. Hmm. Yeah, I guess they did. So? So, I think he's probably faking. Oh, please. Paranoid much? Why would anyone go to that kind of trouble? What would be the point? He would have to be such a jackass to do that. I don't know why he's faking. I just know those wings were bogus pieces of shit that were, like, strapped on, which means he is a fraud. You don't believe me, just see for yourself. Huh? You made the rookie mistake of turning your back on the body. Oh my god! How can he possibly still be alive? See? Fit as a fiddle. Barely a scratch on him. Just... Please, don't shoot him again, okay? Why? If you say he's immortal, then it shouldn't matter, right? Yeah, I, I know what I said. Alright, maybe he's not god tier. Who can really say for sure? Just try giving the machine gun a rest for a while. He really wants to help you. I don't understand why this fucker won't die. He's a hilarious rascally clown. You know how it is with clowns. No? They are notoriously difficult to kill for reasons that basically don't make any sense. 
I'm personally not aware of a single timeline in which this codpiece packing moron dies. What? What does that mean? It means you can't keep down the clown. Eh? Say it with me. You can't keep down the clown. No! I won't say that! Say it! You can't! Go fuck yourself! Just tell me what it means! It means crazy clowns just won't die for some reason. In adventures such as yours, they tend to linger long past their welcome. They linger and linger and linger, and just when you think you're totally fed up with their bullshit and you can't take another second of it, they just linger some more. And you never know what they're up to. And they're always scheming in the shadows, and it's quite possible that whatever master plan they're hatching just doesn't make the slightest bit of sense at all. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how stupid the clown's schemes are or how sick of him everybody is. He just won't die. This is honestly the worst sales pitch for a mentor that I have ever read. Granted, but come on. Just let it slide this one time, please. Just no more shooting. You can slap him around if you want. That's fine, but shooting is off limits. Why? Because you can't kill him. He's the most important character in... In what? Well, okay. Maybe not the most important, but he's still really important. I seriously think you've been mostly fucking with me. No way! Okay, shh, shh. He's approaching you. Come on, man, be cool. Let's just see how this plays out. It looks like he's got a present for you. Oh, I wonder what it could be. You motherfucker. He looked at me funny! Yeah! Want to know why? Because he's a fucking clown! Do not type in big letters! He confuses me! Why do you have to be like this? Why can't you just be down with the clown? I don't know! I like shooting him. He just has this perfectly shootable torso. Hey! What the fuck is this horrendous music? What? You don't like it? It is without a doubt causing me more pain than whatever this unkillable clown is feeling right now. Well, whenever you shoot the clown, I play the elevator music. Oh, fuck! No! That's the deal. Either shoot the clown and face the music, or put on your fucking big boy suspenders and stop trying to murder him! All right! Whatever! I find your stipulation to be tyrannical. Fine. Just... Plug the thing in the goddamn box already. All right, now what? Now, all the monitors have power. Each one is set to a different channel, but they won't display anything unless they're unlocked. You unlock them by finding the right keys and using them on that little model of the radio tower next to you. One of them is unlocked for you already. Can you see it up there? Yes! Yes, I can see it! It is a view of my dead sister! Oh, what a beautiful sight! She really makes a more breathtaking corpse than I ever imagined. Whatever you say, weirdo. Anyway, it's like I said, this is a glorified computer. If you want to change your text color, you can sample some pixels from the display. This is perfect! I was intending on using her putrid green blood to color my text. Were you? Yes! It was going to be like painting my words in her blood as a token of my ruthless triumph. Then, on the next time I was going to harass somebody, it was going to be all like, Look who won! It's just me now! And I would just be like, Now what's up, bitches? It was going to be so badass! <laughs> Okay. Also, this is a funny coincidence, but I was also batting around the idea of stealing her big use anyway. I mean, as another kind of trophy to let people know 
I'm whole, and the best sibling is in charge now. I was on the fence about doing that, though. But I guess your stupid locked keyboard maybe forced the issue. But I'll just say bad assery was the reason, and omit the tedious anecdote about the keyboard. So yeah. Then let's consider this a serendipitous facilitation of all your most juvenile typing fantasies. Let nobody henceforth mistake you for a guy who isn't trying as hard as he can to type like a cold-blooded motherfucker. Yes! That's what I want! Great. Now grab that mouse there and pick a new color. Excuse me? What the fuck is this? It's a wireless mouse. No! It's this awful kind of mouse! The kind with the glossy orb! I hate these! Yeah, truck bells are pretty terrible. Can't argue there. My thumb claw is kind of slipping on this shiny ball! This is incredibly difficult to operate! I really don't envy your situation. Also, this is an awkward vantage! If I want to use the mouse and look at the screen, I have to stretch my arm really far and kind of twist my body to look around the corner, like this. Well, maybe that's why it's a wireless mouse, so you can pick it up and walk around the tower and use it on whichever monitor you want. But I can't move it! Pardon? It's stuck! Why is the mouse stuck? Probably because it's welded to the counter. Are you fucking serious? Yes. I cannot believe this! What sort of asshole would set up a wireless mouse and then weld it to the counter! That's a hell of a question. Oh! Oh! I am so, so pissed off at this! Who is responsible for this nightmare? I don't know. Someone who thought it would be funny watching you struggle with a shitty trackball mouse welded to a counter? I demand to know! Was it you? It was you, wasn't it? Maybe. Mark my words, whoever you are, someday I will track you down and kill you! You already did. Liar! It's true. It already happened in, like, the quasi-future. Huh? What? For someone who's supposed to be a lord of time, you really kind of suck at thinking fourth dimensionally, let alone fifth dimensionally. You've got a long way to go, kid. Quiet! Your nonsense is distracting. Okay, there! Wait, this color is all wrong! It's too muddy! Yeah, the environment is pretty grim up there. Skya doesn't provide very good lighting when it's all clouded over like that. Just bump up the brightness on the display. Okay, how's this? That looks better. Wait, let me check. Okay, yeah. 2ED73A. Yeah, that's correct. What? That's the hex code for the color. What the fuck are you talking about? It's the numerical representation of the color in hexadecimal format. Okay, so? So I was just double checking to make sure it was right. And? It was right. This is a particularly aggravating tangent to an already ghastly conversation. I'm definitely going to figure out who you are and how to kill you. But Caliborn. How do you expect to kill me when I'm already dead? <laughs> oh, man. How is it actually possible for someone to be this obnoxious and unfunny? I don't know. Maybe it's a miracle? Stop fucking with me! I'm serious! Oh, no! He's serious, everybody! Look out! He's about to throw the tweeniest, brattiest tantrum his little green exoskeleton can muster! Stop it! If you pitch a fit in your little bow tie and suspenders, it will probably be so adorable that I might just drop dead anyway. Or my ghost will. Fuck you! Now I know you're full of shit! Ghosts can't die! That makes no sense! No, really! Go ahead! Flutter your eyelashes at me. Make it as grumpy as possible. Kawaii me to double death, bro. I'm so close to just wreaking mayhem on literally everything within my tantrum radius if you don't stop teasing me and start being useful to my quest again. Wait. Shh. 
Settle down. Something important is happening. What? The clown. He wants to give you another present. Oh, God. But seriously, this present is really important. Just turn around and receive it graciously from your new mentor. He's not my mentor. And remember, no more clown shootings or I play the music again. Ah! Honk. What is that? What does it look like? It's a magic crowbar. Why is he giving it to me? I'm not sure. I thought you knew everything! I know a lot of things, but I don't always understand his motivation for doing the stupid things he does. Why not? I just don't. Like, one time, he sold a girl some potions? I have no idea why he did that. Potions? Yes, potions. He also threw some corpses into a sprite to revive them and fuse their identities to create a disturbing freak of nature. I'm still not really sure why he did that. Probably just to fuck with everybody. What corpses? It doesn't matter what corpses, just some corpses, okay? The point is, he probably didn't even have any reason for doing it. He was just being weird and capricious. But that doesn't mean it didn't end up serving an important purpose anyway. After the fused corpse sprite exploded, both of their ghosts got fed up and decided to start working together. And now, they're doing some important stuff in the afterlife. But I, I kind of doubt this clown had any idea that would happen. Or maybe he did? Who really knows with clowns? Holy fuck! Who cares about this? What about the crowbar? What about it? You said it was important! It is important, but I don't know if he knows that. I bet that crowbar is a useless piece of garbage! I will not accept it! Maybe he heard you bitching about the wireless mouse being welded to the counter, and he's giving you something to pry it off with? Oh! Right. Maybe that's it. But that's not why it's important. Then why? You know how at the start of an adventure you find some seemingly trivial thing that turns out to be important later? but at the same time you have no idea why or how it'll turn out to be important? Uh, yeah? It's like that. That doesn't explain anything! It explains everything! What's magic about it? What does it do? I'm not telling! Tell me what I'm supposed to do with it! No! Yes! Just take the damn crowbar! Okay, fine! I think... I am developing a premonition about why this is important and what I'm supposed to do with it. Really? Yes. It's going to happen really soon. I can feel it. Wait, what are you? <coughs> hey, stop that. What did I say? You said shooting the clown was off limits, but I am still permitted to smack him around. I'm just following the rules. That's true. Okay, I'll allow this. Yes! You piece of shit! I stopped allowing it. I think you must have mental problems. Ones that are worse than mine, I mean. I just want you to be friends with him and to stop beating him into a coma with a crowbar or riddling his sad floppy body with full metal jackets. Although, I will admit it is hilarious every time that happens. Oh? This is amusing to you? Then what if, for a laugh encore, I started fucking up your dumb tower? No, don't! Cut that out! Make me! You're going to cause huge problems for everybody if you keep that up. Mostly for yourself. Then shut off that music and be useful to me again. How? Tell me about my quest! You brat! I'm not telling you shit! I could do this all day! Wow! This is just the most fun thing! I love this magic present! You know what? That clown? Maybe he's not so bad. I mean, once I broke him in a little... Okay, fine! I'll tell you some stuff! Just quit it! Thank you! Now what exactly would you like to know? Everything! Everything is a lot. Care to narrow it down a little? Obviously not the boring, irrelevant things. Definitely not things like, 
Who kisses people with their unpleasant, non-skeletal, swooshy lips? Just all the things that I need to know to win this game. That's not how adventures work, though. You don't just make some omniscient narrator inside a computer tell you everything all at once. There's like this process to it. You reveal certain things at the right time, depending on whether the hero has met certain requirements and is ready to learn those things. What you learn and what I tell you is more up to you than it is to me. Who cares? I don't want your excuses. Aren't you excited about your adventure? About being unchained for the first time ever and getting to explore this mysterious place? And meeting new people? And solving puzzles that will lead to the realization of who you were meant to be and how you fit into this epic? No! So far, the adventure is boring and frustrating and consists of an idiot in a computer and a clown who won't die! I want to know when I get to start fucking shit up! You'll definitely get to do that later. When? Not long from now. Like, in a couple of hours? Or- That's up to you. There are puzzles to solve all over your planet. Your mentor can help. The sooner you do that, the sooner the fun will begin. You really aren't telling me anything. We had a deal. I put the crowbar down. Now tell me things. Why don't we narrow the scope of the Q&A then? Try asking very specific questions, and I'll decide if it would be appropriate to answer at this time. Yeah, good idea. Then, my first question is, what is this place? The medium, you are in your game's session. I know that! What's this planet, I mean? It was called Earth. Earth? That's it? Yes. Weren't all the Statues of Liberty a dead giveaway? If you see one or more shitty old Statues of Liberty on any post-apocalyptic wasteland planet, that automatically means it was Earth all along, as a rule. Then, when you realize that, you're supposed to have a mental breakdown. I am unfamiliar with this rule, and skeptical of its veracity. Tell me more about Earth! It's the place humans are from. But that was a very long time ago with respect to the planet's current age. Earth has been through a lot. It was even relocated a couple times. Yes, I brought it with me, I think, into the game. Yes, but it was relocated once even before that. It was moved from its native solar system where it circled around a little yellow sun. Then it found its way to a new system around your big red sun. It stayed there for a good while until your sun started dying. Why would someone move a planet? Its universe was about to explode, so its proprietor closed up shop and got it the hell out of there. How? That's not important for you to know. Suffice to say, planets just have a way of scooting around in this adventure. Okay. Why is this my planet in the game, though? Because your kernel sprite turned into a black hole and sucked it into your session? No, I mean, I thought I was supposed to have a cool and special place. Like a land of something and something. You do. You just have to unlock it. That is when your real quest will begin. How do I do that? You know... Finding keys, solving problems, all the potential for extraordinary achievements in your quest must be unlocked first. We've been over this. Where do I find the keys? I don't know. Lies! Why would I know that? You think I'm like an encyclopedia on key locations? I got better things to think about than where all your stupid keys are. Find them yourself. Better hop to it. No! More questions first! What am I ultimately striving to unlock, to make my real land appear? Is it some sort of giant, fancy keyhole? No, more like a big door. A door to what? Treasure? Kind of. If there's any treasure in there, it would be guarded by your denizen. What's that? A powerful monster that rules your planet, asleep in the core. He appeared there the moment Earth got sucked into your session. What kind of monster? Is it a deadly, challenging monster? Yes. He is the deadliest, most challenging denizen of all. He very rarely appears in game sessions and is usually designated for the most naturally gifted warriors. His name is Yaldabaoth. So my goal is to burrow fuck deep into the center of Earth, unlock his door, and then destroy him! Uh, sort of. You can fight him then and there if you want, but that won't do you much good. And not just because he'd probably kill you instantly. You're better off listening to him. 
Why? Because he will make you an offer, by which I mean he will give you the choice. The choice to do what? I won't tell you that. Fuck! No! You were on such a roll of not being shitty! It's just a very important decision you will have to take into consideration once you hear it. Something unique to you in your journey. Basically, if you accept his terms, your real adventure will begin. Your true planet will be unlocked, and a whole lot of other crazy shit will happen. It's best not to get bogged down in the details, though. The bottom line is, by accepting, you will begin the most difficult game session anyone has ever attempted. What? That's bullshit! Why do I get such a raw deal? Because you are being punished. For what? For your hubris in embarking on a one-player session. That's against the rules. What rules? Where are these rules written? They aren't written anywhere, they're just the rules. Are the rules you and your sister followed written anywhere? Uh, no. You just knew what they were and you followed them. There were consequences for breaking them. So, this shit-ass session is punishing me for being too full of myself and killing my sister? Pretty much. Uh, whatever. I accept the consequences for doing those excellent things. Just bring it on. I thought you'd feel that way. So what's so terrible about this session, aside from the first stage being insanely boring? It's called a dead session. So? So, there are three kinds of fucked up sessions, and yours is the worst. There's a null session, which is pretty much a normal session that's doomed to failure. Everything works correctly. The sprites are prototyped, the battlefield can evolve, the forge is present, Skya can gestate a new universe, theoretically, but events conspire such that this never happens. Basically, the players are doomed to fail. Then there's a void session, which is the same as a null session, but without even having the potential for success. Nothing is prototyped. The battlefield doesn't evolve, there's no forge, it is completely inert. It has no chance of bearing fruit, at least not without some sort of miraculous external intervention, like a deus ex machina. And then, there's a dead session, which is a void session, but worse. It's started by a single player. The kernel sprite collapses into a black hole, sucking the planet into it, and eventually the sun and the entire solar system. There is no hope of creating a universe in such a session under any circumstance, not even with outside help. Victory and defeat in a dead session are dictated by totally different terms. One way of looking at it is, if you're fortunate enough to even get your quest started, it will be like playing the game on the extreme difficulty setting. I hope you're up for that. Of course I am! Let me ask you, if you were the most deadly denizen of all, would you want to mess with... This? Hell no. Hmm. What? Gamzee again. Oh. Wonder what he's up to now. He doesn't look too good. <laughs> oh, great. Now he's vomiting blood. Are you satisfied? You made this dear, sweet, uh, pseudo-innocent juggalo vomit leader after thick, glutinous leader of nasty purple blood. Ugh. I'm debating whether I should play the elevator music again. Would that be funny? I'm not sure. Kind of borderline, really. Hold on. What is that? What? He's puking something up. It looks like... Are those... Keys? What? He puked up some keys. That's weird. What kind of keys? Just some regular looking keys. With some kind of clowny key ring. Hmm. Do you think they might work on this tower? Why the fuck are you asking me? How could this be something you don't know? Don't be that way. I'm just thinking out loud here. So you had no idea that this wretched fool swallowed some keys, intending to later regurgitate them in front of me, probably as another present. He's kind of like a loyal pet, isn't he? Dragging ridiculous stuff into the house as gifts for his master barfing up disgusting things on the carpet and beaming with pride over his generous offering. Isn't that what you want from a devoted minion slash mentor? Did you or did you not know he had these keys? 
Nope. I'm just as surprised as you are. I don't believe you! Hey, I told you. I have no idea what that clown gets up to in his spare time. I'm not even really sure how he got here, to be honest. Maybe he was stowed away in a shitty liberty? Or maybe he was just hiding in one of the vent shafts on your meteor when you entered. He had years of practice to master that move now that I think about it. Shut up! Just shut up! How can everything you say be so useless? Why don't you quit bitching at me and try out those keys? How do I know which key goes in which hole? You don't. What? There are no labels? Or numbers? Or anything? Nope, you just have to try them on every keyhole until one fits. That's so terrible! I literally cannot even think of a single thing more terrible than that! Welcome to your quest. Okay, I guess I found one that fits. Ah! Yes! It's this bumbling twit. Where is he? He is in his game session, exploring his land. His land looks cooler than mine! It is cooler. That fucker! I am so going to mess with him, now that I can see him! Hey, why can I see him now? Their game was blacked out, last I looked! You were looking through a standard chat client viewport. This tower's signal bypasses the field of void permeating the session. As long as you find the right tower, the right monitor, and have the right key, you should be able to see anything in existence from this planet. Interesting. Try another key. It's the dark human. He is somewhat tolerable. I mean, as a strong and competent male. What? So you're down with the Dirk? No. All I'm saying is, the death I wish on him doesn't have to be especially painful. It could be like going to sleep with maybe only a short screen. I think you want to be bros with him. Shut your mouth! We'll try another key. Oh ho! And here it would seem that we have an exemplary pair of saucy bitches. Do you think... What? No, never mind. It was a frivolous question. Think what? I was just wondering... Do you think it's likely if I peek at them for a while, they will begin to, uh, maybe... What? Stroke each other's hair? Okay, I'm leaving. Or maybe... Oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? You do it with another living torso that's near you. I mean, a torso you haven't killed yet. When one dares to allow the seductive serpent of debauchery to slither into one sarsuopagus. What the fuck? I think it's called... Snuggling? Bye! Wait! Where are you going? I think you've got a handle on this. We're warming up to the clown, or at least you stopped shooting him every 30 seconds. So, it seems like you're ready to accept him as your mentor and begin taking this quest seriously. I find him moderately less repellent, and he has proven himself useful, I guess. I will accept the resilient bard as my servant. Cool. My work here is done then. Try out some more keys, then go exploring and look for more. You'll get the hang of it. Oh.